Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And something very interesting happened to us last night. Uh, we got a piece of information on the, uh, the Shira Development Bible. This is a this is a thing. The Netflix Shira Bible. Um, you know, I question whether or not it was legitimate. I think it might be legitimate, but if it is. This shows us that Noelle Stevenson originally planned for She-Ra to go in a very different direction. That it was going to look more like the original She-Ra. Yeah, imagine um, that. And somewhere along the line, uh, we got the version of, of Netflix She-Ra that we got. But uh, pretty interesting. I have to wonder if this was the version that wasn't, uh, you know, if this was the version that was pitched to, to Mattel. Mm -hmm. You know, because it does seem to fall more in line with the original show and uh, comics and, and such. So we'll take a look at this. We'll take a look at this and oh, yeah. see what the differences are. I'm sorry, her knees are driving me crazy because like her legs look really, like her knees are way down here. Yeah, that's that's Stevenson's art style. I know, just yeah. driving me nuts, sorry. I was distracted. <laughs> like her knees are too low. Anyway. So Anyway, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 238,000 subs. Woo! Uh, thank you for the support. We have talked a lot about uh, Netflix Shira, uh, Geeky being a huge OG Shira fan. Very Ooh, disappointed. Like mm -hmm. Yep, very disappointed in the Netflix reboot. Now, if you liked it, it's okay. Um, it's totally okay. The only big, really big complaint we've had about this show is a lot of the fandom. Uh, a lot of the PR behind the show. The PR behind the show, and it's not just us. In fact, the original voice actress of Shira, Melody Britt, actually had to call out the PR, DreamWorks mm -hmm. PR. Uh, there's a lot of drama around. That was the, three years ago? Three years ago, yeah. A lot of drama around this show, a lot of drama around the PR, of course. You know, the, um, the narrative was that uh, people who didn't like the new design of Shira, you know, the one that looked like Ben 10, in a dress, yeah, those people were just a bunch of toxic men. They just yes, wanted right, to, yes. to to get off to Shira. That's not men are allowed to get off to Shira because you know, you know that's wrong. But if you, if you since it's for, since it's for the women and the young people, you know, underage porn of getting off to Shira when you're a woman is completely fine. Yeah, that's that's completely fine. Uh, completely fine. So that was that was the story. She was given biker shorts. She was given moon boots. Um, you know, she looked very different and more boyish. And than... Moon boots suck. Sorry, yeah, the moon all, boots are awful. They all had moon boots for some reason. Uh, now, if this is actually the legitimate show Bible, um, this has been circulating, and I won't say where I got it from. We do have people send us interesting mm -hmm. things from time to time, give us uh, insider information from time to time. But this one apparently fell off the uh, fell off the truck. And uh, the person who gave it to us said, hey, uh, you don't need to to uh, name check me. Definitely. So <laughs> yeah. you know who you are. Uh, thank you thank for you. that. Uh, so, the, yeah, th this was very interesting. At first, I was kind of like, eh, who gives a shit? You know, right? Um, but then we looked at it, and immediately, the first thing you notice is that She-Ra looks like She-Ra. Mostly, yes. Mostly. I mean, a little bit updated, but she's even wearing more revealing uh, uh, attire, I guess, then like, she's got like the backless thing going on here. Mm -hmm. She's got sandals instead of boots, no moon boots. Now this is uh, Noel Stevenson's design, but you know, she's got some cleavage. She's, she's uh tan, very tall, blonde, not eight feet tall, no, but bigger than Adora. Well, to be fair in the show, she was supposed to be eight feet tall. And most of the time she wasn't drawn that way. Yeah. It was very inconsistent, mm -hmm. wildly inconsistent. Uh, now the overall the overall synopsis of Stevenson's uh, you know pitch for Shira does sound pretty similar. I mean there are some things that have changed, but the the biggest uh, you know deviations I guess would be the character descriptions. Uh, in fact, if you go through here and we'll we'll just skip down here real quick. Uh, we've got you know again Shira looking mm -hmm. mostly like Shira. Of course, this is her rough doodles, not final art. Uh, Glimmer is... She has that haircut, but she doesn't look like she's like, you know, chonky. She's she's not chonky. She's got some, some cleavage going on here, too. And the biggest one, the biggest surprise for me was actually Catra. Catra looks like the original Catra. Catra. And it's called, they called her Dirtbag Little Sister. Not her love interest. Her Dirtbag Little Sister. 
Yeah, um, that is actually the other biggest deviation from the final series is that there didn't seem to be a whole lot of shipping going on in this uh, at all. In fact, I think if they had stuck with this version of the show, um, I, I think a lot of the uh, OG fans mm -hmm. would have been more on board. Shippers would have Oh, been. but then they didn't have agenda. There, yeah. Um, now, I mean, she does mention, you know, somewhere in there, you know, uh, Natasa. And yeah, Spinarella, and Spinarella, she that. does say that they're about a bonded pair. But that's about it. Um, they're talking on here, like, I know they, they said about Shira being radiant and beautiful. Well, that isn't the vibe I got in the show. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is interesting though, because this version of Catra sounds uh, an awful lot. Oh, she like, gets a shapeshift too. She Catra's in shed yeah. mask, like the show allows her to shapeshift into a panther. Yep. Because she was a product of Hordak's experiments. None of that. Expect plenty of cat jokes. Claude None Hansen. of that. Yep. Yep, she wasn't a furry. Uh, this no. is actually OG it was Catra. Like more like a you know you know like more like a sister competitive sisters. Than yeah, it was you know then you know I want to put my face between your legs. Yes, yeah. Um, so <laughs> Adora wasn't into uh, cat. Now, actually, I think I think if I remember correctly, you read the uh, the write up for Seahawk, and Seahawk was. Seahawk. Yeah, he was very charismatic and like, you know, well, you know, it's not exactly Seahawk. They made him like, you know, he keeps trying to hit on, you know, Adora and she doesn't, mm. she doesn't get it because she's oblivious to his advances and he can't understand why his charm isn't working on her. And that is, but he wasn't as an effing annoying as they made him in the show. No sea shanties? I don't know. God, that was, the sea shanties got old after a while. So here's what the original description was. I, I, I just want to go through this because I'm like, I would have been more on board with this version of the show. Now, we know they were going to joke it up or whatever, but... You read it, and then I'll add, I'll add commentary. Go for it. Okay, so this is the original write-up. Uh, Shira is a high-fantasy sci-fi adventure show about a warrior princess with incredible powers fighting the forces of evil. Okay. It's Xena Warrior Princess if it took place in a high-fantasy alien fairyland that was under siege by the evil empire from Star Wars. Oh, so shocker there. But, you know, I want to point out again, Xena came after She-Ra. So Xena was wanting to be she -Ra. Anyway. Now, this is the original show I think they're talking about here. A genre-smashing, gender-role-subverting adventure full of so much fun, action, and comedy that you almost don't see it sneaking up on you to punch you in the I face. I they're, they're talking about the new show. Yeah. <laughs> Punch you in the face with a healthy dose of feels. Actually, the original Shira was a genre smashing uh, show. No, see, this is about the show. It embraces everything that was exciting, outrageous, and over the top about 80s high fantasy while updating it for a modern audience. It's not afraid to gently Gen mock, gently mock the absurdities of 80s sci fi and fantasy tropes, not only out of love. There's no cynicism or snark to be found here. What, well, someone should have told their PR department that. Because immediately, if you didn't like anything about it, it was because you were a horrible person who did who was against gay people, and you were a racist, misogynistic, homophobic, whatever. Yeah, something changed. Something definitely changed. Now, again, if you look at the uh, the outline, we're not going to show you the whole thing here. Um, I well, don't the ending is different. That's for sure. Yeah, the ending is different. But uh, yeah, the the kiss doesn't say there is no kiss. No, there is no relationship. There's very little about who's sleeping with who, who likes whom. It's about the actual show, about what they're trying to accomplish. The best friend squad thing's still in there. But it was toned down. It was more about, you know, like the whole like political aspect of it. Like you sometimes you have to attend these events because, yeah. you know, you're diplomat or diplomatic relations and all that. But it was, it is not like what it ended up being. Yeah, so something changed. And I have to wonder... Because, you, know, I, I, you know, I've read Noelle Stevenson's comics, and I, I don't think Noelle is that bad as far as a writer goes. I have to wonder if when they put together the team from Tumblr, mm -hmm. if there wasn't uh, some, some discourse once they got the green light as to what was going to offend people, what people were looking for. I don't know where the hell the moon boots came from. Uh, at some point, Double Trouble in, in the original write-up is actually completely female. Oh, they keep referring to her as she. Yeah. She, she. Double Trouble is a she like she was in the original. A she. She-Ra is a show with a sincere heart and a true sense of wonder where the power of love really is the most formidable force of all. With action-adventure feelings, flying horses, fabulous secrets, swords, robots, tragic backstories, and humor to balance out the tragic backstories... This is a show girls can grow up with and a show that anyone can get into. Well, what we got wasn't the case. That is not what that 
sounded great on paper. You know what a show girls grew up with that they could grow up with? The original She-Ra show. This one is very much so much that it's only certain girls can grow up with. Yeah, so uh, heroes or villains, kind or selfish, extraordinary or ordinary, competent or bumbling. Blah, blah, blah. Between. Okay, it's all like Bask happy or sad, all... you know, black or white, fat or thin. So this is, is this Mobius? Depression. Is this Mobius art? This I don't looks know. Like, I don't know. Anyway, they talk about, you know, Etheria and Despondos and, um, you know, I mean, it does, it's similar. The 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 basics are similar to what the show was. Uh, we go through this whole thing, but I want to get to the, um, I want to, yeah, I want to get to the characters. So we know Adora is basically the same, except she doesn't sound as incompetent. No, they actually said that she was competent. They never got, okay, here. Yeah. Let me show you that part. They're talking about, um, ruthless, ambitious, and efficient. Never got that from the show. In the beginning, never got it. And they're talking about how, you know, she goes to the, she, she had dreams and she went to the Whispering Woods, um, and she tricks, picks it up and explores. The, show, the sword explodes into a shower of sparks, knocking her out. And then she meets Light Hope and all this other stuff. And they're talking about, you know, how she gets captured. It's very different. Yeah, Light Hope. Yeah, right out of the gate. Light Hope tells Adora she's not from Etheria, but Eternia. Um, she's a princess and she turns into She-Ra. Um, yeah, so... Adora defects from the Horde to the Great Rebellion with the help of newfound friends Glimmer and Bo. Adora has a long path ahead of her to redeeming herself with Glimmer and Bo. They don't have the... Uh, they still the, have Best Friend Squad, basically. They do. But it they doesn't call sound... call it that. It doesn't sound as dopey as... It doesn't sound like, Summer Party, Best Friend Squad! <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they did say in here, uh, despite her competence and intelligence, something doesn't add up. Something doesn't add up. Uh, she didn't seem incompetent or really that intelligent. She seemed like a dopey kid. Yeah, she. They, they get the. They're, they're stealing the car when she she falls out of it and finds the sword. Yeah, that's basically what they're doing. Um, never got competency out of her. Now this is this is the same. Shira believes that there's good in everyone. You know, I love this. I'll tell you why. Shira believes there's good in everyone, and all these shippers are like, Shira's the bestest thing ever, except they don't believe there's good in everyone. If you don't agree with their versions of everything, they go and, and, and harass, troll, bully, do whatever they can. If they truly, truly believed in Shira and they truly, truly believed in the message, they wouldn't act that way. Sorry, continue. That's true. Uh, you know, Shira believes there's, there's good in everyone, except... Except for, you know, those trolls on the mm -hmm. internet. You know, those, those There's good in are. everyone as long as you agree with, with what you think. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as you like the same things, you know, you, that someone likes the same things as you. Then if they don't like it, it's because, oh, they're bad people. How They literally saw them tell people to kill themselves over fan art of She-Ra. Yeah. But, yeah, please do tell me again how She-Ra brings out the best in people and, and, you know, looks for all the good in people and is a good example of how you should look for the good in others. Uh, some of this is similar. There, there is a stronger emphasis on her Eternian bloodline, right? Uh, Swift Wind sounds basically the same. I love the flying horse friend. Flying horse friend. Glimmer, always the bridesmaid. Always the bridesmaid. She's pampered princess. But again, she looks more like OG Glimmer. You know, yeah, not the really. Haircut. Yeah, well, the, haircut, the haircut. The haircut, the haircut yeah. But the outfit yeah, and the, the outfit, physique. Yeah. Yes. Um, Bo, we don't see anything here. Just he's a good guy. He does magic tricks. Um, clever tricks and illusions, and uh, he's largely devoid of ego or machismo and has no issue with needing to be saved or asking for help. <laughs> yes, that's he can get a bit touchy when it comes to his music, though. Anyway, uh, Angela, cool bird mom, cool bird mom, cool bird mom. Did I say cool bird mom? Oh, I thought you said cold bird mom. Well, she was kind of a cold bird mom, too. She was cold. Turkey. I love this one, Mermista, non sucky Aquaman. Well, you failed there. Non sucky Aquaman. So she and Seahawk get along very well and like to hang out and gossip about everyone else. Yeah, Seahawk never struck me as a let's hang out and gossip kind of guy. No, wasn't he trying to hit on Mermista? And she was like, oh my God, like, get away from me. Yeah, and the, well, not in the oh show, God. I mean, in general, like in the original no. show, he didn't strike me as a let's hang out and gossip type guy. <sighs> She'll tell you what she thinks, even if you didn't ask. She's loyal to her friends and would ruthlessly destroy anyone who crossed them. No, basically, she comes off as being a whiny, complaining bitch in workout gear. Yeah, pretty much. For some reason. Frosta, passive-aggressive ice queen, which was who Frosta was in the original show. Now they made her a child in this one. And who looks Eskimo because, you know, ice powers. 
Yeah. Uh, they don't mention her being a child at all in this. Uh, they mm -hmm. said she's she's frigid. She wasn't the original. Yeah. So. Passive aggressive ice queen, I think, is a pretty good description for the original. Yeah. Uh, double trouble. Improv enthusiast. Master disguise and a huge troll. She. 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 She can look like any human or humanoid person at any moment's notice. You know, for all their, oh, thank God, Noel Stevenson came and gave us non-binary characters and gave us all this stuff. Well, this was the Bible from the Shira Bible, and she didn't. No. Uh, yeah, it's hard getting her to take anything seriously. Even when deep undercover, and this sounds a lot like the toy line. Now, uh, she wasn't in the show originally, no. but she was in the comics. And um, even when deep undercover, she can't resist playing pranks or following Threads that she finds funny often jeopardizing her mission. She uses humor to hide her own insecurities and becomes anxious during sincere moments and must ruin them with a joke. Underneath her mischievous devil-may-care exterior, she's deeply insecure and desperately craves approval. Scorpia thinks her jokes are hilarious. Uh, Double Trouble impersonates her horde identity more often than uh, she has just so she can hang out with Scorpia. Uh, Natasa and Spinarella, now they sound basically the I same. I love it. They're like they call She calls them the B-Squad. The B-Squad. Um, and mostly because people say their powers are stupid or pointless. Natasha um, throws nets and Spinarella spins, and that's kind of it. And their princess is a name only. Um, and they're voted to the cause, and they're a bonded pair. And that's basically all I talk about with those two. Perfume of flowers, beef connection to nature, surprise, surprise, light hope. Sage Von Candy Valley, blah, 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 blah. You know, Madame Rouse. Now, Madame Rouse sounds like she was supposed to be in here a lot more than she was. Yeah, she was only in, what, like three or four episodes total? Um, if that. Yeah, I was looking here. She was in She was in a couple. I remember mostly from the first. She was one, two, three, four. Four episodes, right? Um, it sounded like she was going to be a major character in the show. And she sounded... I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, she gets her spells wrong due to forgetfulness. It sounds like the original Madame Rouse... Other mains find themselves finding out surprising facts about her all the time. She's possibly immortal. Characters resembling her appear in uh, hieroglyphs on the walls of ancient ruins of legends of old. Her friends learn over time never to underestimate her. Uh, she is has a rife romantic history, and the main cast keep encountering her numerous former flames in unexpected places, uh, often still in love with Madame That's Rose. actually kind of funny. That is. I actually think that's funny. Uh, Jock Wizard Queen cast a spell Um... Seahawk, off-brand Errol Flynn. So this is interesting. Yeah, Seahawk seems like he comes from an entirely different show, probably his own. He is a physically flawless space pirate with rock-hard pecs, a full beard, and a flair for the dramatic, but his charms are completely wasted on She-Ra, who just doesn't really understand what's going on. Does Seahawk want to help them or not? Why can't he keep his shirt closed? Seahawk places his entire self-worth in being interesting and romantic, so She-Ra's constant clueless rebuffs wound him deeply. He's really an okay guy, though, if a little self-serious, and he can be a real fun time with his tall tales. And, oh, oh sea shanties. Never mind. They got the damn... Bella thinks he's great, and the two like to have guy time. That's not the vibe I was getting. No. Um, yes. Then we have Catcher. Then we have a dirt bike little sister. Um, Shadow Weaver. You know, pretty much Shadow Weaver. And Hordak. Now, Hordak is a shadowy figure for most of the first season. Really seen away from his throne. Uh, or lab becomes more active villain as the show progresses. Does not care much for getting his hands dirty in battle, preferring he manages armies from a distance. Okay, um, there's evidence underneath his scary bone collar and face paint that he's kind of an anxious nerd. Uh, that's they, about what they, they did. They turned Hordak. That that's but one of my biggest complaints. And this this show is not canon. Doesn't exist in Masters of the Universe canon, right? Biggest complaint I had about the show is they turned Hordak, who should have been a complete badass. He was Skeletor's boss. Because mm -mm, everybody's kind underneath. Okay, everybody can be. Everybody can be, you know, changed with love and friendship. I love this. He's motivated by jealousy and ambition. Blah, blah, blah. Ambitious. Scorpia, good-natured bully. And trapped a goth kid at the debutante ball. What? I don't know. She lives. In, they said she ran away from a high-born life and lives in the woods. Okay. Goth kid at the debutante? That's that, not what I got. I got like science nerd, you know. Uh, Horde Prime. Just about everything. The actual big bad, which was, that's about right. Um, and then it goes on about the stories and I don't want to read blah, all this. Blah, 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 But the blah, kiss blah, blah, didn't blah, blah. save the universe. No. There was no hint at all in this that they were going to be a thing. Actually, they talk about different things for the seasons and the one they gave for possible seasons. Well, it was only four seasons here. 
I'm talking about the end here, and she re Adora powers up to she again, defeats Horde Prime, catch up her Horde Prime, because, you know, she decided she liked the uh, theory of the way it was. And then they talk about, if the season can include cameos or appearances from Masters of the Universe characters, if the rights become available, thank God they did not, if not, an implied reunion can make up the closing sequence after Adora assures her friends that she will remain the guardian of Etheria. Like, she was going to get her brother and her family back from Eternia, right? Yeah. And then, but she's like, oh, it's okay, I'm still gonna remain here as She-Ra. There's no kiss, there's none of that shit. She was, there was, her family was gonna be brought into it. It was gonna, they were gonna tie it in. Now they can't, they, they couldn't because of the, uh, the rights issues, thank the Lord. Or Mattel took a look at it and said, hell no. Hell no, we're not, we're not getting He-Man involved in this. <laughs> we got, we got other ways to ruin He-Man. Yeah, we know? already have a plan for that. We already have a plan to ruin He-Man. Uh, interesting though, they said, yeah, with uh, Catra, like, don't make a, di a big deal about it. Don't make a big deal I didn't about even it. think it was worth reading, honestly. Yeah, I, I mean, there's I, a lot of differences. There's a lot of similarities, blah, blah, blah. I honestly don't care. I just think it's funny that the character designs looked more like the original, that the yeah. characters themselves read more like the original. The only, you know, identity politics stuff pushed into it was, you know, that we had Natasa and Spinnerella together. Nobody cares. No one would have cared. Um, and then it became what it became. Yeah. No idea why. I don't know. At what point did it become a, a very uh, uh, different looking, different sounding show? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, again, I think once, uh, you know, Stevenson put her team together and started getting a lot of, you know, input from Tumblr, that's probably when I don't really boots, know. boots became a thing. Everybody wore moon boots, you know, for some, for some reason. Don't know, don't care. Sneakers and moon boots. <laughs> so we got to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.